When you are a constant failure, when you have tried and tried for years to build a platform by doing what others have done before you, simply giving your opinion on sports and pop culture, you have tried on local radio, failure. You tried on national radio, which confused the handful of people that actually care about you. Normally, when you fail on local radio, you don't fail up to national radio. But anyway, you have tried on national radio. Failure, national television, failure, podcasting, failure, YouTube, failure. Fun little fact, and I actually didn't find this out until today. Several years ago, Bamani Jones, he launched a YouTube channel for his podcast, Right Time to Be a Failure. 571 subscribers and only 10,000 views over the 60 videos that he uploaded. I guess ESPN eventually moved his podcast to their channel here on YouTube, which has millions of subscribers, yet somehow, Bamani Jones still goes unnoticed. Eventually, though, after a lifetime of consistent failure, you find yourself reaching a point of desperation. Sometimes, a little glimmer of hope will come along. Something that happens that you think will be your big break. Perhaps it's an interview on your platform that ends up going semi-viral. For the first time, in this case, for the first time ever, mainstream media outlets are giving you attention for something that happened on your show. Typically, when the media is talking about Bamani Jones, they are showering him with praise and false confidence. But a few weeks ago, he was receiving legitimate attention for his interview with Jake Paul. When something like this happens to a huge embarrassing failure, it can be extremely dangerous because they see this glimmer of hope, this illusion of success, and they will do everything in their power to exploit it, which is exactly what is happening right now with Bamani Jones. I am sure you guys that have been with me for one or two years have noticed that I haven't spent too much time this year talking about Bamani Jones. Now, there are a couple of reasons for that. Number one, there really hasn't been a purpose. The Bobo, he has kind of scaled back the mythical racism for reasons unknown. For a couple of years, he tried to be one of the leading voices in the exploitation of mythical racism. But unlike Joy Reid, who was able to turn this into a lucrative career, Bamani Jones, he was unable to capitalize on mythical racism, which shouldn't be all that surprising. I mean, this is the Bobo we're talking about. The originator of the huge embarrassing failure. Bamani Jones, he could step into a boxing ring with an unarmed boxer. Poor guy is missing both arms. And the Bobo would manage to find a way to get knocked the fuck out in the first round. The second reason I have scaled back the focus on Bamani Jones, I can't find his ratings. Last year, we followed the Bobo throughout his first season of failure on HBO. We followed his ratings as they went from almost nothing to literally nothing. Now, we are unable to enjoy that ride this year because his ratings have went from nothing to non-existent. Ratings are so low for season two of America's biggest huge embarrassing failure. Nielsen, they finally just gave up tracking them. We are no longer tracking the ratings for Bamani Jones. We have found more people living in the town of Gilbert, Arkansas than people willing to watch Bamani Jones on HBO and TNT. About a month ago, Bamani Jones landed the biggest interview of his career. Now, he wasn't able to grab a legendary figure like Michael Jordan, Derek Jeter, Tom Brady, or a legend in pop culture like Howard Stern, Son Hostin, or the Whoopi Cushion on The View. No, 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 no. The biggest interview of Bamani Jones' career, the only person willing to give the Bobo a hand up instead of the usual hand out that he's accustomed to receiving, was YouTube star and wannabe boxer Jake Paul. Now, this interview was purely accidental. The only reason a success like Jake Paul appeared next to a failure like Bamani Jones is because Jake Paul, he didn't know who he was. Jake Paul thought his PR team hooked him up with an interview with someone like Joe Rogan or Ariel Helwani. You know, Guys with credibility in the world of combat sports. Guys with an actual audience. When the Zoom meeting connected and Jake Paul was exposed to the face of failure for the first time in his career, he was disappointed and understandably so. But he tried to make the best of a bad situation. Jake Paul had a fight to promote here. 
Even though Bamani Jones' audience is measured in the single digits, Jake Paul managed to find a way to get this short clip viewed by millions of people. Watch for yourself. I'm going to be honest, bro. I don't know who the fuck you are. My PR team set, Dude, set up this I interview. About- when you are dealing with someone suffering through a dual diagnosis, Bamani Jones, he has been diagnosed with both ASB and HEF, attention-seeking behavior and huge embarrassing failure. The latter is obviously self-explanatory, but today we're going to focus on the ASB. When doctors, psychologists, when they are dealing with a patient with this dual diagnosis, when they are attempting to turn them into a normal person, the last thing, I mean the last thing they want, is for the patient to receive a surge of unsustainable attention. What ends up happening, the patient will do everything they can to exploit the situation to keep the attention on themselves. In the past, I have compared patients suffering through ASB with drug addicts. The prognosis is the same. Drug addicts, they will sell their soul to the devil, who now chooses to identify as Joy Reid, but they will sell their soul to Joy Reid to get their next fix. Birthing persons in withdrawal for attention, they will do the same thing. But Monty Jones has taken this minor controversy with Jake Paul and he is exploiting it in an attempt to draw ratings and attention. And look, I'm going to be honest with you. From a business perspective, from a marketing perspective, it's not necessarily a bad idea. When you are struggling to draw Chelsea the coat handler to a fresh Armani coat, when you're being dominated by Mr. Clean in the ratings, you're going to do everything you can to ensure you continue receiving woke welfare, money you haven't earned. The question is, Will this work for Bamani Jones? Will the exploitation of something that happened a month ago lead to increased ratings on HBO? (laughs) Bamani Jones' newfound obsession with Jake Paul. It reminds me of Skip Bayless and his obsession with LeBron James. And you know what? I just thought of something here. Yesterday, Joy Reid insinuated that black people don't need the assistance of white people even though her entire career has been at the assistance of white people. But here we have Bamani Jones trying to use Jake Paul to enhance his career, enhance his ratings. But yeah, he doesn't need assistance from white people. But anyway, over the last few weeks, Bamani Jones has flaunted his obsession with Jake Paul on social media. Tweets, videos, he brings him up in interviews on other platforms. Just watch a few examples for yourself. His push into the boxing world is actually kind of working. He's like Gen Z's Donald Trump. He's leveraging a social media and reality TV career into actual relevancy and staying power. I think he thinks I'm younger than I am. Because if I'm 42 years old, man. You're not going nanny nanny boo boo me into having some fight with you. Like, I'm not going to lose my composure in dealing with you. And once he realized that wasn't going to happen, he was out of bullets. Mm-hmm. He ain't have nothing else. Like, yo, you got a hustle going. It, it's impressive, but at the same time, I admit I am a little disturbed by the idea that we're acting like you're a real boxer when you don't box boxers. All right, we have a lot to unpack here for starters. I like how Bamani Jones is questioning the relevancy of Jake Paul. It's incredibly confusing. How can someone who has never been relevant question a kid who has maintained his relevance? He then tells Jalen Rose, lead pastor at Woke United Methodist, I think Jake Paul thought I was younger. I think he wants to date me. Once he figured out I'm only interested in my emotional support goat, he tried to bait me into a verbal argument, a verbal fight. Father Jalen, I am too old to engage in those shenanigans. I have a lucrative career where I am paid millions of dollars to destroy 75% of Bill Maher's audience. Jake Paul, he obviously doesn't understand or know who I am. I am Bamani Jones, the original huge embarrassing failure. I find it ironic. Bamani Jones is attacking Jake Paul, claiming he is not a real boxer. He's a pretend boxer. When for the last decade, Bamani Jones has been pretending to be a legitimate broadcaster. Over 10 years in the industry, legitimate broadcasters, they draw ratings. They build a platform, an audience. The only pretender I see here is Bamani Jones. But I want to focus on what he said. You are not going to bait me into a fight. 
I think his exact words were, you're not going to nanny nanny boo boo me into a fight. But unlike Bamani Jones, we don't talk like 80 year old women here on the channel. He claims Jake Paul was not going to bait him into a fight. He wasn't going to cause him to lose his composure, embarrass himself like a failure. <laughs> if that's the case, someone please explain this to me. Check it out for yourself. This is the litany of tweets sent by Bamani Jones about Jake Paul. Now keep in mind, I could not find any examples of Jake Paul responding. This so-called beef exists only in the mind of Bamani Jones. The repost of the video clip of Jake Paul owning Bamani Jones on his own platform, it's been viewed over 5 million times. Yet, for some reason, of those 5 million people, only 5 of them watched Bamani Jones on HBO. I find this last screenshot the most interesting. On his podcast dedicated to his newfound obsession with Jake Paul, Bamani Jones said, There is nothing more embarrassing than getting your ass kicked in front of the world. Um. Um. <laughs> I mean, Bamani Jones should know this better than anyone. Every Thursday and Friday night, he gets his ass kicked in the ratings. For the last 10 years, Bamani Jones has consistently gotten his ass kicked. He has run out of Preparation H from all the ass kicking. ESPN Radio, ass kicked off the air. ESPN, ass kicked off television. YouTube channel, ass kicked to ESPN's channel where he routinely gets his ass kicked in views by people like me. HBO, ass kicked from Sunday night to Friday night where I would imagine HBO will eventually kick his ass off the air. <laughs> you know, I don't like to throw around the word loser. We all have our strengths. But how else could you describe the media career of Imani Jones? This dude has never won at anything. HBO, they gave Bobo the week off last week. They needed one Friday night in February where ratings weren't in the pooper, so they decided to air the farting hippopotamus instead. But I guarantee you, I guarantee you, all of this media attention Bamani Jones is receiving from his one-sided feud with Jake Paul, this will not translate into ratings. When I check ratings next week, I would be shocked if Bamani Jones beats Mr. Clean. But give me your thoughts. Bamani Jones attempting to exploit Jake Paul for his own personal gain. Is this a smart business move, marketing move? More importantly, will it work? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.